Uganda lies in the tropical region of the world. Epidemiologists and researchers have found the tropics to have many and similar bacteria. These are the lead causes of many infections we suffer from. Mid last month, the National Drug Authority published a list of drug outlets operating without proper licensing countrywide. Part of the reasons the authority raises is the dangers and hazards of accessing healthcare in substandard facilities. If you choose to ignore asking questions on the quality of doctors, nurses and paramedics you find in a health facility, you will be on the risk of contracting more illnesses, getting wrongly diagnosed, wrong treatment, and on the extreme, death may occur in quack health facilities. Amidst the growing number of bacteria, wrong diagnosis and treatment can result into antimicrobial resistance. The World Health Organization listed pneumonia, tuberculosis, blood poisoning and gonorrhea as infections that are becoming harder to treat as the antibiotics used to treat them are becoming less effective. But why is this happening? The bugs themselves, they are becoming more complicated. If a bacteria wants to survive, obviously it's survival for the fetus, and so it will find ways and means of producing enzymes that go beyond the, the antibacterial viral, you know, activity. Dr. Chitaka, a pediatric infectious diseases specialist at Mulago Hospital, says the number of children presenting these infections is on the rise. We typically see infections like malaria, but also things like meningitis and pneumonia and neonatal septicemia. And I'm telling you that the biggest burden of, of bacterial septicemia is, is mostly in children. Antibiotic resistance can affect anyone of any age and it occurs naturally. But misuse of antibiotics in humans and animals is accelerating the process. People have given antibiotics to chickens and, and to other livestock and then the, the, the antibiotics are limited in the livestock. So they are causing further and further resistance. Antibiotics are classified under Class B. This means they are only supposed to be sold on prescription, but this is the opposite here. And I think the problem is with all of us, the, pro the clinicians who prescribe, the community that goes and picks antibiotics from pharmacies and they don't complete the dose. Other factors like weak laws have enabled medical professionals and drug shops sell antibiotics to people who do not need them or in less quantities. Poverty is also another huge factor in this. Give me two capsules because that's what I can afford. And that's really dangerous because you're just simply massaging the bacteria and not killing it. Results from a study carried out by Epicenter at Imbarara Hospital on antimicrobial resistance in children shows that a big number of children were resistant to some drugs but the doctors had not established this. So we can continue using only ampicillin to treat respiratory tract infections or other pneumonia. So even if the, the medical doctors were aware of the situation uh, that there are some multi-drug resistant bacteria, uh, bacteria circulating, they were not aware of the level of this resistance. The National Drug Authority is in charge of monitoring the performance of drugs on the market. The secretary to the authority, Dona Kusemererwa, says the authority is aware of the illegal sale of drugs. The problem of over-the-counter sale of medicines is one that we are very concerned about, but it's quite complex. Right now, there's a mix-up of roles. Clinics are dispensing, pharmacies are prescribing, and so it requires, um, under the leadership of the Ministry of Health, we are the regulators of the products, the medicines, and the regulators of the professionals to come together and agree that we must restore things the way they ought to be. She, however, said there is an exception for amoxicillin, which is distributed as per Ministry of Health regulations. Uh, the Ministry of Health has authorized uh, village health teams and village health workers to dispense, to, to deal with uh, pneumonia in children. We also asked her if there are any new antibiotics on the market or those that have been taken off. While um, antibiotics become let's say, less useful for a particular infection, they may retain their usefulness for 
uh, another infection. So it's not often that we completely remove an antibiotic from the market because most antibiotics treat a range of infections. So if it's amoxicillin, we may have 10 manufacturers who entered our market, then maybe every year another one or two will enter the market with still with amoxicillin but from a different source. But we've not had any novel antibiotics being registered. Dr. Chitaka said medics have an important role to play in averting misuse of antibiotics. Doctors shouldn't treat um, viruses with antibiotics. Doctors shouldn't be treating um, fungal infections, for instance, with antibiotics. They shouldn't be treating common colds with antibiotics. And it's important to follow the sensitivity pattern. If you don't, then the patient will not recover. The cost of developing one antibiotic costs about three billion US dollars. From the development in the lab and then using the antibiotic in animal models and then by the time it reaches the population which we call phase four trials, it is so expensive. I think in the last 50 years only one or two new antibiotics have been formed because it's so expensive. And so if we run out of options, what is going to happen? A strategic plan was reached by the World Health Organization during the World Health Assembly in 2015 to ensure prevention and treatment of infectious diseases with safe and effective medicines. Its objectives are to improve awareness and understanding of antimicrobial resistance, to strengthen surveillance and research, to reduce the incidence of infection, to optimize the use of antimicrobial medicines and to ensure sustainable investment in countering antimicrobial resistance. Walter Mwesije, NTV. Good morning.